Okay, um, thank you for uh, thank you very much for coming to this talk. Uh, I'm Professor Zhang. I'm teaching in the Department of English uh, at CUHK, and I'm interested. I'm researching how we process and acquire English as a second language. Um, today, I will introduce what our, our movement tell us about how we read, how we take a reading test, and how we pick up new words from reading. And um, although this talk will not teach how to get correct answers in DSE, reading comprehension tests, the information you get from this talk will be very interesting and help you become more aware of your own reading behaviors and strategies. Okay, so let's start. Um, this talk is the last one of a series of talks provided by professors in our department. And these talks attempt to help you to better understand how to approach the DSE and to introduce what we study in our department. But obviously, we are not the DSE experts, and thus our talks are not tutorials of how to take a DSE or give you model answers to DSE. But um, these talks will certainly give you uh, a better understanding about topics that our department is studying. And um, if you have missed any of the previous DSA talks, don't worry. Um, uh, and if you are interested in our department, please visit our YouTube channel, English CUHK, which features many interesting talks in addition to DSA talks. Okay, so uh, why do we study eye movement? Uh, what is the relationship between eye movement and English? In fact, eye movement matters a lot in our daily lives. Let me give you a simple example. Suppose that you are having a conversation with one of these three people here. Which person do you think is paying attention to you? Who do you want to have a conversation with? Can you type in the chatting room? Can I see your answers in the chatting room? Let me see. Okay. Um, right. Yes. <laughs> Obviously C, right? That's right. I think we all agree that we may want to have a conversation with C, not A or B. Why is that? The difference between C and the other two is her eye fixation on you. It is because her eye contact with you indicates that she's paying her full attention to you, as I'm making right now, right? So it seems eye movement indeed matters, sending important signals to us, especially regarding mental focus, where our attention is placed at. We consciously or unconsciously pay very close attention to each other's eye movement. Going one step further, our, eye, our eyes may reflect our mind. That said, if we examine our eye movements, we may better understand our mental processes. Simply put, what, uh, what happens in our brain. So many researchers, including myself, have been curious about our mental processes. For example, what is mentally happening when we are processing a second language like English? What happens when we are exposed to new English words? But because mental processes are something we cannot observe, they are invisible, right? But thankfully, eye movement is something we can observe. It is visible. So if we observe and analyze our eye movement, we maybe better understand more about our mental processes, such as reading or learning language. So how do we capture eye movement? In order to capture and record eye movement, we need an eye tracker, a special device for studying eye movement. As you can see in this image, an eye tracker is mounted on a computer monitor and it, it detects the reader's gaze point where your eyes are fixated and records it with a very high resolution. And based on the recorded eye movement, researchers make some conclusions as to the person's mental processes. What about when we are not sitting in front of a computer monitor for instance, what about we are go, uh, when we go shopping? In this case, researchers use eye tracker glasses. 
The glasses have inbuilt camera that detects and records your eye movement. And because they are portable, you can move around wearing the glasses and do your normal uh, daily activities such as shopping. So when and where this technology do you think will be useful? Aside from reading studies, can you, can you guess? Where would you use this eye tracking technology? One of the sectors where eye movement data could be useful is marketing and advertising. As many companies try to attract customers' attention, they try to catch our eyes because it directly relates to their profit. Can you identify this place? Can you type in the chatting room? Where this place do you think? Where is this place? Can you guess? Ikea, that's good case, right? This is Ikea, right? The numbers and lines can, uh, you can see from this image represents how this customer's eyes moved at an Ikea store. At first, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then a nine, right? So according to this image, this customer's eyes first fixated on the hangers and stayed there and then this customer checked the price, right? So by examining how customer's eyes moved in a store and which information triggers buying, IKEA may be able to make some decisions on how to display products and related information such as price, right? And our eye movement also matters in online space too. In fact, Customers' eye movement may become even more critical in this space because the information that you obtain from uh, this web page, right? So, for instance, web developers may be interested in what type of images attract learners' attention, which information customers look at longer and more closely, how do they navigate the web page? which information leads to buying, you know? Answers to these questions will provide very useful information for website managers and developers, right? Okay, now let's talk about how this technology can be useful to us who are interested in English reading, okay? Normally, you would sit in front of a monitor and read a text in a computer mediated mode. For instance, you may read news articles, blog postings, or emails. In this case, an eye tracker will be mounted on the monitor and as explained earlier, track your eye movement, okay? And this is something that we can obtain. This is so how long your eyes stayed on that particular space. Okay. If the circle is B, it means you stared at that part for long. Next, the lines show how your eyes moved across the text, sometimes from the left to the right, which we call forward saccade, and other times your eyes may move from the right to the left, which we call regression. And it may happen when you want to reread some previous part. And um, if you, I mean, when you want to accurately understand that uh, text part. Now, let me share another interesting video clip that shows eye movement during reading. In this video clip, a girl reads a passage written in Swedish first. Next, she reads another passage written in English. Take a close look at her eye movement and see if there is any difference in her eye movement between reading in Swedish and reading in English, okay?
Oops, I'm sorry. That's right. I hope you enjoyed this um, video. Okay, so what is your impression on the eye movement of this girl? Can you share your thoughts in the chatting room? So you just uh, you have just seen a girl's reading in Swedish first, followed by reading in English, right? And you have seen her eye movement. Can you can you tell the differences? What what is your feeling? What is your impression about her uh, way of reading? What do you think? Did you notice any differences? Okay, let me wait. Okay. Okay. So let me move on. <laughs> so as you have just seen, you can tell that the girl seems a lot more comfortable and skilled in Swedish reading. Do you, would you agree? compared to reading in English. It is because Swedish is her first language and English is her second language. Two passages, in fact, contained the same content, okay? All right. And this is something we can, uh, what we can ob obtain using an eye tracker, okay? So now that you have been just introduced to some basic information about eye tracking technology, uh, let me ask you this question, okay? Here you see two different reading behaviors for the same text. Let me call the left one uh, reader A and the right one reader B. So what can you tell about reader A and reader B? Um, so this time you don't have to type longer, okay? You just type A or B, okay? So who is a more skilled reader? What do you think, okay? Um, can you type A or B in the chatting room? Who is a more skilled reader, A or B? Excellent, we need WT, Case, right, everybody. Saimo, excellent, yes, A, right? A is a more skilled reader, excellent. Perhaps reader A is a more skilled reader than reader B because reader A's eye movement shows very efficient text processing, fast word recognition, skilled sentence parsing, and very little uh, regression. By contrast, reader B shows a slower word recognition and more frequent regression, perhaps indicating this reader is not quite skilled in processing sentences written in English. Right? Excellent. Very good. So our movement tells us not only uh, our reading behaviors, but also our test taking behaviors. Uh, I'm sure you must have taken several types of um, English comprehension tests. Um, and some items may ask you to find the main idea of a passage. Some, uh, some items may ask you to find some detailed information from the passage. And sometimes you are asked to uh, find the meaning of a word or find a synonym of a word. And sometimes some items even ask you to uh, identify the readers, I'm sorry, the, uh, the author's intention or point of view, right? And would you guess, I mean, would you imagine that our movement could be different depending on the reading comprehension items? So let me show how our eye movement may differ in uh, reading comprehension items in different formats. So let's suppose there is a gap filling item, okay? In this uh, type of reading comprehension item, 
a, a sentence is given with several gaps, as you can see here, okay? And you need to fill the gaps by choosing one out of multiple options for each of the gaps here. Where do you think you will observe uh, more intensive eye gaze in this type of item? I think the answer is quite obvious, right? On the gaps, right? So let me show you the eye movement here. Right, indeed, according to Brunfaut and McRae's eye tracking study, test takers' eyes fixated a lot longer on the multiple choices, the gaps, right? And according to this heat map, which gap do you think was the most difficult? Let's see, there are six gaps, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so out of these six gaps, can you enter the number in the chatting room? Which do you think was the most difficult item? Exactly, that's right. Very good, everybody, excellent, yes. The second one, right? The second one was the most tricky, uh, the, the difficult one for this particular test taker, right? It seems the second gap was very tricky and thus this test taker stayed uh, here for a longer time compared to other gaps. So what we can also notice here is that the word following each gap seems to have received heightened attention together with the gap. Right, very interesting. And let's see another type of reading comprehension item. This is a sentence ordering item and you have to order the sentences in a coherent and logical order. So this item measures test takers knowledge about sentence cohesion, sentence connection, right? What patterns of, of eye movement would you expect in this case? Where would you read more carefully? Word initial part or word middle part, um, sentence middle part or sentence end part? Which part do you think you will pay more attention to? Middle, interesting guess, right? It is perfectly okay to throw your guesses here. Let me share the heat map. Right, as you can see in this heat map, test takers tend to pay more attention to the beginning of each sentence. Why do you think so? It is because in order to determine the order of sentences, the first part, like the first word or the first phrase, normally gives us some clues on the relationship between that particular sentence with other sentences, such as pronouns, or transition words, right? Like first, next. And again, we can identify the sentences that were problematic to the test taker. It seems the second, third, fourth, and fifth were more um, difficult than the other sentences to place, uh, right? Okay, now let's move on to some other type of reading comprehension question. For this one, you should read each paragraph carefully and choose the right heading for each paragraph. So it requires more global reading, not a sentential level, but at a paragraph level, right? And let me share the heat map. And here's the heat map for this item. And you can see some interesting patterns in this eye movement. First of all, it seems somehow Readers fixated on the left part. I mean, you tend to process the sentence, I'm sorry, uh, the left part of the paragraph a bit more closely compared to the right part. And in fact, this is a quite common trend, uh, what we observe quite commonly from uh, readers. And also it seems the first two paragraphs were relatively easier to identify the, their matching headings but the rest required more intensive processing to choose an appropriate heading, right? Okay, so it seems um, the test item, uh, the type of test item seems to affect our eye movement behaviors. What about our reading skills? So let me show you another type of our, uh, reading comprehension item here. 
this item measures a rather global level reading comprehension as you have to read the entire passage to answer, uh, uh, to fill the blanks on the right uh, hand. So as you can see here, the reading text is on the left, instruction is above the text, and you can see the blanks on the right. And you can also see the time taken to respond to this item above the blanks, right? So let me show you how the two different test takers behaved differently when completing this item. Here. So let me share the site movement data, which was reported in BACS 2013 study. Okay, so here we see test taker A and test taker B, right? Which test taker do you think shows a movement of a successful test taker? Again, please share your thoughts or guesses in the chatting room, okay? A or B, what do you think? Excellent, very good. You're very good, right? Excellent, yes. A. The left image shows a successful reader's eye movement, whereas the right hand shows a unsuccessful test taker's eye movement. Excellent. Right. And here's the heat map of their eye movements. And as you can see here, the successful test taker could easily figure out the answer, while the unsuccessful uh, test taker struggled a lot more, searching for the information to fill the blanks. And another interesting uh, fact about this unsuccessful test taker is that he or she checked the time, right? Perhaps he or she was conscious about spending too much time on this item. So uh, this, test, this test taker checked the time, right? So in sum, our eye movement during test taking is influenced by the type of the reading comprehension item as well as our reading skill. Okay, quite interesting, isn't it? Okay, now it is your turn. You will see a sentence, okay? Please read the sentence and try to understand its meaning, okay? You don't have to do anything, just try to comprehend the sentence. I'll give you enough time, so do not worry. And of course, this is not a test. So let me show you the sentence. Okay, now, Miss Rudy, <laughs> in fact, I don't think you had that much difficulty in comprehending the sentence. So I'm not gonna ask you uh, the meaning of the sentence. Instead, I'm gonna ask you another question. Are you ready? Have you seen any of these words? A, B, or C? Again, Please share your thoughts in the chatting room, okay? Wow. Okay. <laughs> now, let me give you another question. What is the meaning of that word? Can you guess? Do you think you can guess the meaning of that word? Excellent. Very good. So here's the sentence again. Right. So as you can see here, the answer was B. Very close, right? Excellent. Very good. Yes. And its meaning was boundaries or limitations. Excellent. Very good job. And um, for your information, penny pline is in fact a non-word, meaning this word does not exist in the dictionary. It's a, it's a made of word, okay? So let me show you 
uh, eye movement data captured for reading this sentence. Right. Um, and I believe your eye movement must be quite similar to this one. So uh, you could have noticed the new unfamiliar word penipline and looked at that word a bit longer than other words. This means this new word attracted your attention, right? And what I'm sharing now, I mean, this is Godfrey's eye tracking study, okay, on um, incidental vocabulary learning from reading. And as you have just answered, she asked her participants uh, to give her the correct word form and the correct meaning. And what she found from this study is that the amount of eye gaze captured on that word, penny pline, correlated significantly with learning of the word form and meaning. So this finding shows that it is important to pay attention to new words during reading in order to learn the word of form and meaning. And if you just skip the word, the memory about the word will be only um, weak and thus it will not be result in, uh, it will not result in learning. Okay, but what about um, a reading text that contains a lot of new words? Okay, so I think we should talk a little bit more about vocabulary and reading. I will show you a short paragraph. Please read the paragraph carefully and try to identify the main idea, okay? And don't worry, I'm gonna give you enough time. If you think you can understand this paragraph, you can share the main idea here uh, in the chatting room. If not, do not worry, okay? Because I'm gonna share you, uh, uh, show you the same paragraph in a bit different format, uh, version, okay? And here it is. What about now? Did you feel any difference? It must have been a lot easier to comprehend this paragraph in this version compared to the previous one, right? And let me ask you this question. What is the meaning of this new word, fudge? Can you guess? What is the meaning of this new word, fudge? Very excellent species, right? If I asked you the same question when you were reading the previous version, I think it must have been a lot more difficult, right? So as you have just experienced, vocabulary knowledge is extremely important, not only for successful reading comprehension, but also for learning new vocabulary from reading. 
So in order to arrive at an advanced level reading comprehension ability, the first hurdle you must overcome is expanding your vocabulary repertoire so that you won't str struggle due to unknown, unfamiliar words during reading. Okay, so I wanted to highlight the importance of um, sufficient level of English vocabulary um, knowledge. Okay, very important. Okay, so thus far I have shared some interesting facts about eye movement during reading and taking a reading comprehension test. And it has been shown that eye movement tells us a lot about our mental processes, including when we read in English. But there are, of course, some limitations in the use of eye movement data. Uh, do you have any experiences of having to read the same page or the paragraph uh, or sentence over and over again? That is, your eyes, um, you know, went through the page, but you were really not there. You you were thinking some about th uh, something else, so you had to read the particular sentence over and over again, right? In this case, eye movement data could be misleading. A large circle, as I have explained earlier, a large circle indicates longer fixation. And usually it means that the reader paid very close attention to that text part. But it is equally possible that your eyes were staring at that part, but you are in fact thinking about what to eat, <laughs> what to do after the class, right? In this case, again, the eye movement data could be misleading, right? So normally, um, after collecting eye movement data, we ask readers to verbally recall their thinking processes when they were reading the passage so that we could obtain more accurate and rich information about uh, readers' uh, mental processes. So as briefly shown in this talk, in our department, you can learn about how we read, how we take a reading test, and how we learn new words. I hope this talk was interesting to you. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to contact me or our department. And this talk will be uploaded in our YouTube channel, again, English UK, along with other DSC talks. And as I mentioned before, there are many other interesting talks, so please distribute this information to your friends. Thank you for joining this talk again and hope to see you again. Bye-bye.